everybody. Welcome. So glad you were able to join us today. This is a question and answer session that we have titled Demystifying Evaluation Plans. Uh, the, the, the question and answer today is focused on evaluation plans for AmeriCorps state and national applicants that are looking toward the FY22 grant competition um, that is underway right now. So uh, my name is Sarah Yu. I'm the Program Impact Manager with AmeriCorps State and National. I'm joined by several folks here in the room today, in the virtual room. Um, I have uh, Sarah Foster, who's also here from AmeriCorps State and National. Um, I have uh, from our, the AmeriCorps Office of Research and Evaluation, Jada Asensio, Research Analyst. Um, and we also have some very special guests today uh, joining us from NORC. NORC is AmeriCorps' Evaluation Technical Assistance Provider. Uh, we have Carrie and Jenny and Kristen um, who are here with us um, from NORC um, and will be able to join in the question and answer. So welcome to them. And again, welcome to all of you. Um, we are not gonna do a formal presentation today and that is because on the Notice of Funding Opportunity page, there is a pre-recorded webinar also called Demystifying Evaluation Plans, that walks you through the process of crafting an evaluation plan, what the evaluation requirements are for AmeriCorps state and national applicants, um, and what the different pieces are that need to be included in that evaluation plan. I am gonna post right now in the chat, the link to the Notice of Funding Opportunity page for the FY22 competition, um, so that you can find all of those resources. I'm also gonna take a moment just to share my screen here and show you uh, a little bit about where these resources live and, um, and what you can find on this page. Wondering if I can get a, a check from um, one of my fellow panelists. Are you able to see my screen that shows FY22 AmeriCorps State and National Grants? Sure yeah. can. Yep. Excellent. All right, thanks all. All right, so this is the web page again for the FY22 grant competition. Um, if you scroll down this page a little bit, you will find a section called Evaluation Plan Template. This is a new and exciting thing that AmeriCorps State and National um, has introduced for FY22, uh, which is that we have a actual fillable word-based template that applicants can use if they are required to submit an evaluation plan. Um, and the template actually walks you through the process for creating the evaluation plan. I'm gonna go ahead and open this link right now so that you can see it. Uh, as you can see, it does come up as a Word document. Let's see if I can get that to open for me on the right screen. There we go. All right, so this is what the evaluation plan template looks like. Um, there are a variety of sections within the plan all of this text is directly fillable. So the italicized information is a series of instructions for that section of the plan. Um, you can actually type right over that following the instructions, of course, but you can type right over that to enter in your plan text. So for example, uh, the first section of the evaluation plan is to talk about your theory of change, meaning the nature of your service activities or interventions and why they are expected to produce the desired outcomes. So. If I was writing my own evaluation plan, I could say, we are going to do good things that will lead to great outcomes. Now, is that a good theory of change? No, no it isn't. But the point is that you can go ahead and type right here onto this document to fill out the evaluation plan. Then you save it on your own computer um, and you'll be ready to submit that along with your grant application when you recompete for funding. Now, I say recompete for funding because if you are joining us today and you are a, and you are brand new to AmeriCorps or AmeriCorps State and National, first of all, welcome. We're glad to have you. Secondly, you actually don't need to submit an evaluation plan. Uh, only applicants that have previously received three or more years of competitive AmeriCorps funding for the same project are required to submit an evaluation plan. So if you're brand new, again, welcome. You are most welcome to stay and learn about what this requirement looks like down the line if you do become an AmeriCorps grantee. Um, but again, this particular evaluation plan requirement is only for our recompeting applicants with previous competitive funding history with us. So again, you can fill out all the sections of this plan. There are also some important instructions up at the top of the screen with some important links. For example, 
the first link here will actually take you to the evaluation frequently asked questions, the evaluation FAQs um, that will walk you through the evaluation requirements for AmeriCorps state and national grants and applicants. There's also information here about alternative evaluation approaches. So uh, if you are a recompeting applicant and you are not able to meet the standard evaluation requirements for AmeriCorps state and national for one reason or another, um, then you can request this, what we call an AEA, Alternative Evaluation Approach. Uh, this link leads you to guidance on, that, on the different kinds of AEAs you can request. Um, and then this link leads you to another fillable form uh, that you can use to efficiently uh, provide and submit um, the, the request to AmeriCorps along with your evaluation plan. So everything you need should basically be in this template. Um, and we're very hopeful that uh, this will help uh, streamline and simplify the process of submitting an evaluation plan to us. And that being said, um, evaluation can be complicated and we know that. Um, and this is why we have NORC with us. Um, this is why we have an evaluation technical assistance provider. Um, they are available to any competitive grantee, current competitive grantee uh, and or state commission um, who would like to get advice about evaluation planning, evaluation implementation or reporting. Um, and that includes anyone who would like to get uh, advice or guidance about upcoming evaluation plan submissions. Uh, because evaluation plans are not reviewed or scored as part of the uh, grant application process, they're actually not reviewed until after grant decisions are made. Um, you are free to reach out to them to ask uh, questions about your upcoming FY22 evaluation plan, seek guidance from them uh, if you would like to do that. So uh, we are going to spend most of the time today um, in question and answer. And again, NORC is here as well, so they're, they're going to join in with me and the other AmeriCorps staff to answer the questions that you have. Um, we encourage you to go ahead and raise your hand um, so that we can have you unmute and ask your question out loud, just because that makes for a better experience for everyone if we can have a verbal back and forth. Obviously, there is a chat box as well. Um, and so you, know, you, can, you can also uh, enter questions in chat if you're not able to, to join us verbally. I do see some questions right now going back and forth about a broken link. Um, on the a Notice of Funding Opportunity page. So apologies for that. It looks like my colleague, Brittany Tonning, uh, also from AmeriCorps State and National, is on it. Uh, so thank you, Brittany, appreciate that. And we will try to get that broken link fixed for you as soon as we can. So other than the broken link, I'm gonna go ahead and stop my share here so I can go back to seeing all of you. Um, and let's see what questions folks have here on the line. What questions can we answer for you about evaluation planning, evaluation plan requirements, the mechanics of submitting evaluation plans, really the floor is yours uh, for anything you'd like to ask today. Looks like we have one raised hand from Desiree. So Desiree, you have been unmuted. So go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Yeah, thank you. Um, hello, Desi here from College Possible. We are a multi-site organization, so we have multiple AmeriCorps grants. Um, and we were planning on using one large evaluation, multi-site evaluation. Um, so we are submitting our draft evaluation plans to our different commissions, but that plan has kind of evolved as we've gotten more details. Is that okay? Um, and is there a better way to navigate that large multi-site evaluation plan? Thanks for the question, Desi. Yeah, I, and I, I think you're probably not alone on this call today of being a multi-site organization who potentially might have both a direct grant with AmeriCorps and maybe also some state subgrants with different state commissions. Um, so appreciate the question, and I think folks can can, can relate to that. Um, it is really important if you work with a state commission or if you are planning to submit a single state application that you coordinate with your state commission. Obviously your application will be submitted to your state commission, will be re reviewed by your state commission and the evaluation plan needs to go through them as well. So Desi, you are absolutely following the right process to submit your evaluation plan to your state commission, get their feedback, make sure that your plan follows any state specific requirements that that state has. Um, that being said, also totally understand the efficiency of doing a single umbrella evaluation that incorporates requirements for multiple grants. If those grants are following the same or similar program models, 
you know, bundling those into a single evaluation is certainly allowable and also a best practice. So um, I think that you're probably going about this the right way, you know, to work with the different state commissions, try to come to a consistent place that, uh, with something that meets all of their requirements and, and also meets your needs as an organization. When you end up submitting the evaluation plan to AmeriCorps, it doesn't have to be perfect right up front. Obviously, we would like it to be as complete and solid as possible. We love to be able to approve evaluation plans on the first round. That is a wonderful thing for everybody. But you have up to a year after grant award, in some cases slightly more, uh, to get your evaluation plan approved. And so if your evaluation plan or plans go in some different directions and you need some time after grant award to get that reconciled and resolved um, and make some changes, you have that year plus after grant award to get that done. The goal is to have an approved evaluation plan in place by the end of your first program year, because that will set you up for success in implementing your evaluation in year two of your grant cycle. Carrie, I see that you have come on camera. Thank you. Do you want to chime in with anything else for that? Um, I, I think you've covered everything. And um, again, you know, I just want to emphasize what Sarah said about the fact that um, you um, have multiple chances to get your plan approved. We have lots of resources to help you if you're finding yourself getting stuck um, and need some assistance. Um, getting an approved plan. And even after you have an approved plan, if you need to make modifications because you discover you know, certain data isn't available or certain things need to change in your plan, um, you're also um, able to do that. Of course, coordinating with your state commission. Desi, thanks for the question. Hopefully that, uh, that answered what you were looking for. Appreciate your, you uh, chiming in with the question. Looking for other hands, uh, other folks who might have some questions. This is a, a good opportunity to get them answered. Anybody have questions they want to bring up for the group? Oh, okay. Jeff just clued me in that we have a Q&A box. Hey, who knew? I didn't even realize we had a Q&A box enabled, but we do. All right. So we have two questions. Um, let's see. The first one says, for programs doing their first plan for an impact evaluation, given that if funded, they have a year to get final approval of their plan, what are your thoughts about giving as much info as possible in the group formation, et cetera, sections, but saying that the final details, for example, about statistical analyses, will be determined after an evaluator is hired in year one of the new grant cycle. Is that a good way to go or should they hire an evaluator to complete the plan now? What a great question. Thank you, anonymous attendee, love that. Um, Carrie, I'm gonna give you a first crack at that one. Carrie is having trouble finding the unmute button. <laughs> I couldn't get the Q&A to move off the screen so I could get to my mute. I'm sorry about that. Okay, so for programs who are doing their first plan. Um, so um, it's important for you to understand that when we review the plans, that's the only part of the application really that we see beyond possibly the first paragraph and the logic model. Um, so if there's details that if you wanna write in your plan um, that, and refer to details in other places, that's not gonna necessarily be helpful um, to get an approved plan. Um, I'm trying to get back to the question, but I think it disappeared, didn't it? Um, so- uh, the um, Look in the answered section, Carrie. Oh, answered, thank you. Um, and, um, so uh, giving as much info as in the group formation sections, do you know what that is, Sarah? Yeah, I think what the, what the questioner is asking is um, given that impact evaluation, so for folks on the phone, impact evaluation refers to either an experimental or a quasi-experimental evaluation that has either a randomly assigned or a statistically matched comparison group. Um, that's the only kind of evaluation that can give us a sense of whether the activities that you're doing are actually causing the positive results that you may be seeing. Um, so our, our large grantees, our grantees that receive $500,000 per year or more from AmeriCorps are required to do 
uh, that kind of that impact evaluation. So I think what the questioner is asking is it's it's difficult, right, to set up an appropriate uh, yes. comparison group. Do they really do they need to have all of that figured out before they submit their plan with their grant application, or can they figure that out after, you know, afterwards during that first year? Uh, when they when they have a chance to hire an evaluator with their grant money. Yes. So um, so the answer is a little bit of both. And let me explain that. Um, so you will not be able to get an approved plan until you have the complete plan. So you can submit a partial plan with your application, but it won't be approved in the first review. Um, and then if you want to work with your evaluator, you will have opportunities to resubmit the plan, um, a, a complete plan and get it approved. So there is a process that's possible there. But I would add that you should go back and look at the template that was put together because we don't require a, a huge amount of detail at this stage um, in the planning process. So there are specific um, there are specific details that we are looking for that we do need that we um, hopefully clearly state in that template. Um, so you may want to take a look um, and see if you are actually able to provide all the information that we require um, and hopefully get an approved plan. But it, it cannot be approved until we have all the detail we need. Um, but again, you will have the opportunity to resubmit your plan, revise and resubmit it if it is not approved, um, uh, or it, if the version of it that you submit with your application is not approved. Would you add anything to that, Sarah? No, I think you covered it. I think, again, we love it when plans can be approved on the first submission. That is a wonderful thing. And so we certainly encourage you to do that if you can. But we also understand resource constraints. If you are not able to hire an evaluator until after you receive funding from us, we understand that. If you need your evaluator to do a power analysis for you before you can figure out what size you know, samples, you're, so what sample sizes you're going to use, we understand that. So yeah, do the best you can on first submission but you do have that year to, to add more details if you hire an evaluator after grant award. Thanks for the question. All right, uh, looks like our, our Q&A box is more popular than our raising hand. So, okay, we'll, we'll go with the Q&A box for now. Um, our next question is from Cheryl. And the question is, who is required to complete an evaluation? Um, Cheryl, the answer, generally speaking, is recompeting Grantees. So, and we, what we mean by recompeting uh, is an applicant that has previously received three or more years of competitive funding from AmeriCorps for the same project. Now, uh, <laughs> all of those things have a little bit technical meanings. Where well, there's competitive funding and there's formula funding that goes through, goes through state commissions, we are talking specifically about competitive awards from AmeriCorps. Um, and also same project has a specific definition uh, that you'll actually find in the mandatory supplemental guidance that goes along with the notice of funding opportunity. So you'll wanna take a look at those, those details uh, closely to see whether you are in fact required to submit an evaluation plan. But again, if you are brand new to AmeriCorps State and National, this is not something that you're expected to do in your first competitive grant cycle. Um, you're only required to do this once you've had one competitive grant cycle under your belt um, and then are you know sort of more prepared to go into an evaluation process uh, like this. That being said, if you are a formula grantee or have received formula funding, please talk to your state commission um, because state commissions may have formula specific evaluation requirements uh, that uh, you will need to work with if you do receive formula funding from a state commission. So thanks for that question. Can you talk about the process for submitting an alternative evaluation? So I think by that, uh, the, the questioner means an alternative evaluation approach or AEA. Um, I can talk about that a little bit. Um, so if I refer you back to the evaluation plan template, again, you can find that link to the evaluation plan template on the notice of funding opportunity page. Um, I wonder, uh, Sarah Foster, would you be able to drop a direct link to the evaluation plan template into the chat? Um, then folks can get there directly. Um, if you look at the instructions for that evaluation plan template, it will link you to two things related to alternative evaluation approaches. Um, the first one is a set of guidance 
And the second one is a request form. So definitely want you to take a look at those. They list out what the different alternative evaluation approaches are and how you go about requesting them, how you go about qualifying for them. Um, so again, I'll refer you to there for the details. Generally speaking, alternative evaluation approaches are for grantees that have constraints beyond their control um, that don't allow them to meet the evaluation requirements as they're written in the AmeriCorps regulations and or uh, grantees that have previously done rigorous evaluations that have shown impact for the program. And so they may want to do a different kind of evaluation that would build on and, and go in a different direction than that. So those are the, the generally speaking, the kinds of uh, alternative evaluation approaches that we have. I will mention also uh, COVID has led to a whole bunch of interesting situations with evaluation. And so one other kind of alternative evaluation approach that you can request is if you need more time. Uh, tip, the, the AmeriCorps regulations ask for an evaluation to be completed within a three-year grant cycle. COVID has made that really hard uh, for a lot of grantees, especially grantees that work in situations where normal operations may be suspended or very different uh, at that site than they would be without COVID-19. Um, so we've been fielding a lot of requests for timeline extensions for evaluations due to COVID-19 disruptions. And uh, we certainly are, are open to considering those knowing that, that life is hard uh, with COVID and that that does make evaluation harder. Question from Joe, who is eligible for support from NORC? Previously, it was open to receive support. Let's see. Oh, I'm, I'm skimming over a little bit of this. Okay, who is eligible to, for support from NORC and how uh, how will commissions know who is eligible? Okay, thank you for the question, Joe. Um, individuals who are eligible or, in, or organizations or individuals eligible for support from NORC are current competitive grantees or subgrantees. So grantees or subgrantees that are currently receiving competitive funding from AmeriCorps State and National and also state commissions. For formula grantees, because commissions set their own formulas, their own formula specific evaluation requirements, uh, the evaluation technical assistance is not provided because we don't wanna step on commissions toes. We want you as state commissions to be able to define your own requirements and provide technical assistance that's specific to your requirements. So again, uh, any current grantee or sub grantee that receives competitive funding, and or state commissions can get uh, technical assistance from NORC. Hopefully that answers your questions. Your question, uh, feel free to either raise your hand, Joe, or, or chat in again if you have more questions beyond that. Let's see, keeping the questions coming, that's good. Is there an amount of evaluation plan changes that require an edit to be submitted after the original plan was approved? Do all changes need to get approved or are there certain types of small changes that don't need to be resubmitted? So yeah, Carrie, I see you unmuting yourself. Go right ahead. Well, I was going to say that's a very difficult question to answer because what do you mean by small changes? Um, for the most part, I mean, I'm the type of person who would err on the side of caution and certainly you can always submit an email, right, Sarah? They could maybe email and ask if um, a change maybe requires a formal revision to their plan. Um, but for the most part, um, you know, we, we, you can revise your plan and resubmit it um, um, by email um, at any point um, for the most part. Is that yeah, I think, um, you know, we, we try to draw a line, which is, as Carrie said, it's a very difficult line to walk between changes for clarity and substantive changes. Um, if you are changing the word who to whom, or, you know, otherwise just sort of changing the way that your plan is phrased, we don't need to see that again. If the plan changes the evaluation design or implementation, if it changes the way that a, a comparison group is set up or the way that an analysis will be done, those are changes that we will want to look at. And, and many of them we can approve relatively quickly. I would say in cases where there's been a COVID disruption that has pushed a timeline back, for example, of an evaluation, if the timeline just goes straight back one year and the, the analysis plan remains the same, but it's just gonna happen one year later, we can approve that very quickly. 
Um, but if you're proposing to change, again, the evaluation design um, or you know, something more substantial about how you'll conduct the evaluation, that would require a bit more uh, reading, close reading, um, and a, a bit more consideration before we could approve that. So generally speaking, I would say err on the side of submitting it, uh, even if you're not sure it needs to be submitted, um, go ahead and submit it to us and, and we'll take a look at it. Again, I I'm, I'm, wanna remind you that if you have a state commission, if you are a single state applicant, single state grantee uh, that is funded under a state commission, please go to your state commission first. The state commission will let you know whether they will forward the plan on to us um, for, for review or whether they feel that those changes are for clarity only and don't need to go further. We have a hand up, which is very exciting. Uh, Nina, let's see if we can get you unmuted. Um, go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hi, thanks so much for this opportunity. Um, I was wondering, and this is just wanting to clarify because I believe I've heard the answer in a previous webinar, um, but if we begin collecting data this year in year three of our initial grant cycle, um, as long as it's on this data collected on the same project, um, and the data collection continues into next year, which would be the first year of the new cycle, um, would that be allowable for the purpose of the evaluation? Um, understanding that, of course, the evaluation plan would ultimately need to be approved for the data collection process that we're undergoing. Yeah, thank you for the question, Nina. This is definitely something we've had some confusion about, and it's you know, on our list to clarify the evaluation FAQs to make this a bit clearer than it is. And, and actually, there's a question in the question and answer box uh, that is very similar. So for anonymous attendee, I will answer your question at the same time, um, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll uh, be able to, to get this clearer. Um, Nina, you're right that with respect to the, the requirements for the evaluation, um, the data that is collected and analyzed for the evaluation needs to be for the same project um, uh, as the project that has the evaluation requirement. Same project, again, has a specific definition that's in the mandatory supplemental information. Same project does not mean same grant cycle. So if your project has been funded by AmeriCorps for 10 years, and you have data from five years ago and you want to do some kind of novel data analysis, analyze it in, in a new way, or maybe uh, you know, combine that with, with data from subsequent years to do a, a longer term evaluation. Any data under an AmeriCorps funded project, if it's the same project, is fair game for an evaluation. So you do not need to collect new data in every grant cycle. Uh, you can use older data from the same project. That being said, it does need to be from your AmeriCorps funded project. If you had a project running for 10 years and then you only became an AmeriCorps grantee two years ago, we don't want you analyzing pre-AmeriCorps data. It does need to be data from your AmeriCorps funded project. So hopefully that answers your question. Again, I know this is a bit, a bit challenging. The same project definition in the mandatory supplemental information is a really important definition. It relates to a lot of things. Uh, with respect to evaluation, including uh, determining your evaluation requirements. Um, so, so take a close look at that. Thanks for the question, Nina. Can I, um, can I, can I just ahead, clarify? Go ahead, when, so when Sarah says same project, what she also means is, you know, to be a little more technical is same project model. Um, and so what we mean by that is um, if, your, if your project has changed um, substantially in any way, since that data was collected, like you work with a different group of um, recipients um, or you're doing some different procedures or you know, different ways of doing things, then your program model may have changed substantially uh, since that data was collected and the data may no longer be relevant. So I would say that we, you know, if we do see that someone's using older data, um, we may be looking for some language in your plan that says, you know, to confirm the, the program continues uh, to work with the same people to um, be implementing the same processes, um, you know, as it was, like she said in the example, five years ago. So just to ensure that the, the, uh, the data you're using um, for your current evaluation is, um, is relevant um, because the project model hasn't changed. Thanks, Carrie, appreciate that. 
We have another hand up, Bethany Cannon. Can we, uh, I think oh, your line um, is unmuted. Oh, go ahead, Carrie. Oh, uh, before we do that, do you want to answer the other question that was related to that with COVID? I, think I did, um, though the, the anonymous attendee who entered it could let me know if I didn't. Um, you feel free to, to chat back in in the Q&A box if you want something more specific, but, um, but I think we covered that one. Okay, all right. Bethany, um, go ahead. Thanks, it's a follow-up to, to this question, which is um, I've seen in the instructions that the evaluation has to cover at least one year of um, funded program activities, which I had always interpreted as being one year during the grant cycle, the three-year grant cycle that's being evaluated. So um, with the answer you just gave that it could be past program data as long as it's the same project and um, you know AmeriCorps funded, does that mean you know is there still a requirement that we collect data from one program year and show an impact, um, you know, from from the outcomes collected in that one program year happening in the grant cycle being evaluated? Does my question make sense? It does. Yep. And this is this is yet another part that I know has been confusing for folks. So appreciate you raising it. Um, I'm going to point you to question four in the ASN evaluation FAQs. Um, and again, those are linked directly from the evaluation plan template. So you can follow the link directly there. But question four says, and I'm reading from the, the screen here, evaluations of AmeriCorps national tribal and state competitive grantees must cover at least one year of AmeriCorps funded service activity for the same project. So we're back to that same project definition again. This is again, comes directly from the AmeriCorps regulations. Um, so same project does not necessarily mean the same grant cycle, though it can be. Um, but if the project spans more than one grant cycle, same project is broader than just the one grant cycle. Go going on with the FAQ, it says one year in this context refers to activities that take place during one program year, depending on the program design, these activities may or may not span a full 12 months. So one year does not have to mean a full 12 months. One year does not have to mean within one particular grant cycle. It just means activities that happen during a program year of the same project of, of AmeriCorps funded service activity. Thanks for the question, Bethany. All right, we've got another question from Joe about the demystifying evaluation plans presentation. Um, this was provided at the AmeriCorps State National Symposium, 2021 Symposium. Um, and so asking whether that presentation will be available to subgrantees or available more broadly. The answer is yes, Joe, and this relates to that, that link that we were that folks were chatting about at the beginning of the session. Um, that the, a, a recording of that presentation is actually posted on the 2022 Notice of Funding Opportunity webpage, but it appears that the link is broken right now. So uh, Brittany Tonning, my colleague is on it. She's gonna get that link fixed um, and then that will be available both to you um, and also you're free to share that with your subgrantees as well. And I appreciate the suggestion about the Ask Regional Conferences. Um, love to you know, be, be able to get the message out about evaluation plans. Again, knowing that for formula subgrantees, the evaluation requirements are set by the state commission. So we have to continue to make that distinction um, that the, the presentation is geared toward competitive grantees and subgrantees only. Question from Mary, for programs that request alternative evaluation approaches, AEAs due to timing, this only postpones the requirement and may result in programs conducting multiple evaluations in one grant cycle. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, that and and if you have a timing extension for an evaluation due to COVID or, or other reasons, and your evaluation goes for five years instead of three, but you recompete for funding again after three years, you may be, or you and your subgrantees may be in a situation of having to run two evaluation efforts simultaneously. I would say that a best practice, not required, but a best practice for that um, is to make those two components um, synergistic, if that's the right word, um, essentially to have two components of a evaluation that are distinct um, and that can be traced back to the evaluation requirements for each cycle, but they complement each other and they work together so that you, what you come up with at the end is a whole that's greater than the sum of its parts, um, an evaluation that, that has, you know, that, that's multifaceted 
um, and allows for both of those evaluation requirements to be met together. Carrie, you want to say more about that? All I wanted to add is that, um, you know, if you're struggling with this particular issue, you know, to please reach out and put a request in through the TA portal, and we're happy to help you try to come up with what Sarah is describing, which is, um, you know, two of separate evaluations, but that are related um, so that, you know, we can, um, uh, you know, get, get as much out of, get you to meet your requirements, but, um, you know, possibly um, maximize um, the resources that you have. All right, thanks again for the question, Mary. Question from Stephen, does the same project definition apply to AEAs as well? Can we use older data from the same AmeriCorps funded project for an AEA? Yeah, Stephen, just to clarify what we mean by AEA. So if you are granted, if you request and are granted an alternative evaluation approach, we're still gonna ask you to submit an evaluation plan for review and approval. That plan may not meet the same requirements as the standard requirements. They, they, the requirements may have been changed in some way, but the evaluation plan itself will still involve data collection, data analysis and reporting um, and so on. And so the data that you are collecting and analyzing under a AEA evaluation plan uh, follows the same rules as a non AEA evaluation plan, as long as it is from the same project, the same AmeriCorps funded project, um, then that is fine. Question from Jennifer. Uh, if we are a recompete program and have to submit an evaluation plan, but had sites closed due to COVID and still do, uh, we'll need a timeline extension. So will we have to submit an evaluation plan and a request for the extension? Jennifer, yes, that is exactly what you would do. Um, the Again, the evaluation plan template uh, has that the instructions section at the beginning um, tells you how to request an AEA, an alternative evaluation approach, at the same time as you submit your evaluation plan. You'll be completing the evaluation plan template, and you'll also be completing that AEA request form and then submitting them together. Um, and so then your evaluation plan would be reviewed along with that AEA request for a, a longer timeline. Um, and so we would be able to see how your plan reflects that you know, requested AEA. So totally fine to do that. And I expect that you may not be the only one that continues to struggle with COVID impacts and, and may need a bit longer time for an evaluation. All right, last question right now in the box though, uh, we'll keep looking for more, both remember that you can raise your hand if you wanna ask a question live. Uh, you're also welcome to use the Q&A box if you don't have good audio um, or if that's easier for you. Um, to, the question is, to what extent are grantees held accountable for outcomes from evaluations submitted? Uh, if, for example, outcomes from the plan submitted within the first year of funding are mediocre as a result of being a QED, and then we engage in a more rigorous RCT evaluation in years two or three that provides more compelling evidence, would we be able to use outcomes from the RCT rather than the QED when recompeting? So it sounds like that would be rather ambitious to do both a QED and an RCT in one grant cycle, but go you, uh, we like ambition, so that's fine. Um, you know, the, re the report that you write at the end should be an honest reflection of what you learned through the evaluation effort. So if you learned that your first study design did not yield the outcomes you were expecting or hoping, and you changed your evaluation design and then came up with different outcomes, yeah, we'd love to see all of that. Um, and with respect to, you know, are you held accountable for it? We want evaluations to, to serve a couple of purposes. We want them to be an opportunity for program learning and improvement. So if you see results that are such surprising um, or disappointing to you, you know, we want you to ask questions of yourself and of your program. Is Are you doing the things that are the most effective? Are there ways that you could revise or tweak what you're doing to make it more effective? It could be that the evaluation design itself wasn't working for you. Or it could be that you really do need to take a hard look at some of the things um, that your program is doing and the ways in which you've built your theory of change. So we want you to do those things and, and use this as an opportunity for, for introspection. Um, uh, obviously, you can also use your evaluation as part of an evidence base for a future grant application. Um, there was a separate webinar on how to demonstrate evidence, a recorded webinar, so we won't go deeply into that now. Um, but your evaluation report is one source of evidence that you can use to make the case for your theory of change. 
if you have the results of an RCT evaluation that provide compelling evidence, certainly we encourage you to submit that um, as part of a future grant application to, to tell your story um, of how your program has been impactful. Carrie, do you want to add anything to that? Um, no, just to say that, um, I mean, I think what's happening, which happens with a lot of the grantees we work with, is that they confuse the evidence review with the evaluation plan review. So you can still meet your evaluation plan, or, or I should say, you, you can meet your evaluation requirement, right, Sarah? Um, but then um, also have additional evidence that you submit. Um, you know, based on other research that you've done. So yeah, that's right. I mean, we require all competitive grantees that are recompeting, so have had three or more years of competitive funding previously, to complete an evaluation and to submit that evaluation to us. Um, but yeah, you're not required to have positive outcomes from the evaluation. Uh, if you don't, again, please think, please use it as an opportunity for program learning and improvement. Um, and, and fit, find ways that you can continue to grow uh, as an organization and as a program um, and, and make your activities more and more impactful. I do not see any more questions right now in the Q&A box or in the chat. Um, so let's give folks another couple of minutes, see if there are other questions that have come up. Um, again, you've got several different avenues to enter those. Um, you can enter it in the Q&A box, you can raise your hand and we can unmute you to, uh, to ask a question. So give it a couple minutes. All right, I'm gonna say we will hang in here for about 30 more seconds. You are welcome to still enter questions or raise your hand and ask a question. Um, we don't wanna keep you either if, if folks feel like their questions have been answered. Oh, we got a hand up. Christopher, can we get Christopher unmuted? All right, go ahead. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Excellent. I'm just curious, now you talked about submitting um, um, evaluations to CNCS and I want to see how that process is done. The process of submitting an evaluation itself, yes. the, the evaluation report or the evaluation plan? Um, I mean, the evaluation reports, presumably if you have a third party evaluating your program now. And regarding that, um, I know there is the, um, the, the yearly uh, program review report, but in terms of the evaluation that third party provides the program, how is that done? Yeah, actually the, um, the, the AmeriCorps regulations actually give us a particular pathway that evaluation reports need to be submitted. Um, and it says that they need to be submitted with the next application for funding. So okay. uh, when you recompete for funding, uh, so usually three years you know, thereafter, that's when you would submit the evaluation report. Uh, as, as Carrie said, it would be assessed for meeting the evaluation requirement that you have done your evaluation. Um, and it would also be considered as part of the evidence base for the recompete application. So that would be your pathway. Uh, to submit that report to us. And then I should mention too, because we have uh, Jada here on the line from the Office of Research and Evaluation. Uh, the Office of Research and Evaluation maintains an evidence exchange. Uh, That's a website where we have a, a repository of evaluation reports that have been completed by AmeriCorps grantees. Um, so your evaluation report uh, will also be posted there um, and available to other programs, other organizations that may be interested in learning more about what you do. Excellent then, thank you. You're welcome. And uh, Christopher actually opened a floodgate here because we suddenly got two more questions in the Q&A box, so that's great. Um, the first question is, our organization is currently an AmeriCorps state competitive subgrantee with evaluation requirements. If we applied for a secondary award for a new project or program model and were successful, would the secondary award be exempt for, from evaluation for the first three years? Good question, um, and this is particularly relevant because we have Public Health AmeriCorps, you know, we have some other pro, um, funding opportunities that are currently open. So um, again, you're probably not the only one with that question. 
This all comes back to that same project definition. Hugely important definition. Definitely look at the mandatory supplemental information to see the details of that definition. If that secondary award that you are applying for, that secondary application is for a new program model, a new project, something different than what you are doing in your other grant, uh, then it would not carry an evaluation requirement until and unless it received competitive funding for three years. So just making this up, if you have a grant from AmeriCorps and you are applying for Public Health AmeriCorps for a brand new program model, and if you get funded for Public Health AmeriCorps and that's a new project, uh, that would not carry an evaluation requirement yet, not until and unless you then had a full cycle of funding, competitive funding, and recompeted for funding down the line. All right, another question. Is there a point where a program with strong evidence needs to do another impact evaluation? For example, in 2014, a randomized controlled trial, RCT, showed strong positive results. How many years until the program needs to do another impact evaluation? That is a good question. Um, I'm gonna refer you to the alternative evaluation approach guidance, the AEA guidance, um, about what, what exempts a program from doing another impact evaluation. So standard evaluation requirements are that if you are a large grantee, if you're receiving $500,000 or more from AmeriCorps each year under your competitive grant, you are required to do an impact evaluation every grant cycle. That's the standard requirement. However, there is a, a alternative evaluation approach that you can request to be, excuse me, exempted from that impact evaluation requirement uh, if you have previously done the impact evaluation. And there are a couple requirements um, that you need to meet to be able to qualify for that AEA. One requirement um, is that you received a, a rating of moderate or strong evidence uh, in your most recent recompete grant application. Um, another requirement um, is that the evaluation report, your, your previous impact evaluation, remains relevant to your current program model um, and is in fact used as part of the evidence base for your grant. So if your program has evolved, if your program has gone in a different direction, to the point where your previous impact evaluation is no longer directly relevant, it can no longer serve as evidence for what you are currently doing, then you need to do another impact evaluation because you would not qualify for the previous impact evaluation AEA. But uh, if you are in fact still doing the same model that you did in 2014, um, if you are still using that impact evaluation as part of your evidence base, and if you can make the case that what you are doing currently in your program uh, is still relevant, that the impact evaluation you did is still relevant to what you are currently doing in your program model, uh, then you would be able to request that AEA type um, and, and would have the potential to be approved for that. I do want to remind folks that AEAs, alternative evaluation approaches, are only approved for one grant cycle at a time. Um, so if you are recompeting in 2022 and you've had an AEA in the past, you don't automatically keep it. You will need to apply for that again uh, for each new grant cycle. So thanks for that question. Follow-up question has come in here. Follow-up from previously answered question. Year two of an RCT was an AmeriCorps funded year, first year not AmeriCorps funded. Uh, oh my goodness, you know what? This sounds like a complicated question. So anonymous attendee, I might suggest that you follow up with your portfolio manager for a bit more detail about your specific case, because it sounds like it is really particular to you. Um, I will say again, that in order for data to be fair game for use during an evaluation, it needs to be from the same project and it needs to be an AmeriCorps funded project. So if you have prior year data from your AmeriCorps funded same project, you're welcome to use that in, evaluation, in an evaluation. If it's from a different project or from a time when you are not AmeriCorps funded, it would not be fair game. So that's really the, the dividing line of when prior year data can be useful and when it can't uh, for an evaluation. Joe, you got your hand up. Go ahead, let's get you unmuted. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Thanks, yeah, I figured instead of a question and answer box, I'll just speak out here. Uh, I do have two questions as follows to the last two or the two prior to the one you just answered. Um, one on the evidence exchange, do you, and I think it's been asked and it was said, stated that um, this is the intention, but do we have a timeline for when the evidence exchange will be filterable by outcome or uh, CNCS, AmeriCorps focus area? 
or other uh, means? Jada, I wonder if I could put you on the spot to answer that question. Uh, Jada, again, is here from our Office of Research and Evaluation. Jada, do you have an answer to Joe's question? Could Joe repeat the question? I'm sorry. Yeah, so on the evidence exchange, uh, it's very limited in how you can filter it. So in the evidence exchange before everything went to AmeriCorps.gov, you could search by AmeriCorps focus area, which helped uh, programs find evidence um, for related programs to themselves to see how uh, evaluations were formed um, to be able to conduct. But now under the AmeriCorps.gov, the filters are do not include that focus area and it makes it very hard to actually find related programs is there yes. a timeline that we might be able to expect any sort of uh, improvements to the searchability or uh, filterability of the evidence exchange? Well, Joe, first of all, thank you for that comment. It's not the first time that we have heard about this. And what we can say is that we totally agree with you. The new site has not been helpful at all uh, to find information and to filter by focus area, like you say, um, we're not expecting to have, um, unfortunately, any improvements in the near future. Um, but I know that uh, our learning officer and we have some initiatives um, on creating uh, a list and guide where you can filter and then search. Um, but I don't have all of that information. Uh, we will be sure to send out any update as soon as we have more resources available for that. And um, also, if you want to search anything specifically, and if there is anything that we can help uh, you out and provide, you can definitely write to us at, yeah, I think the email is evaluation at cns.gov or reach out through Sarah or or NORC if you're um, doing an MTA with them, and we will be gladly to help you find what you are looking for. Thank you. Um, and then my second question, um, and I'm not sure if this has come up before, but this is a little bit more nuanced. Um, when, Sarah, you were talking about the AEA for, um, sorry, the requirements for the AEA for an exemption, needing to meet moderate or strong on a prior evaluation. I was just curious if you might be able to go into a little detail on how that um, is determined. Just because in the past when I was a grantee, I had received a strong um, rating on the evidence exchange, but when in the grant review process, it came back as uh, preliminary. And I'm just curious, like how do we understand where we're gonna fall on that spectrum, um, if it's displayed two different ways by the AmeriCorps. Yeah, thanks for the question, Joe. So the the evidence rating that's listed on the evidence exchange is not the same as the evidence rating that is assigned during the AmeriCorps state and national application process. So I would defer to Jada to provide more details about how that rating uh, comes to be. But what is relevant for the alternative evaluation approach assessment um, is the assessment from the recompete application. And I'll, I'm gonna quote now, I'm reading the, the AEA guidance here. For, for the AEA type that is uh, for previous impact evaluation, in order for an AEA request of this type to be approved, the recompete application must be assessed by reviewers as having moderate or strong evidence and must receive satisfactory assessments on the evidence quality review criteria. So that's independent of what might be listed on the evidence exchange for a particular report. It's specifically about the recompete application. So I hope that helps. Yes, it does. Thank you. It's just really confusing to us on our end to have that be different processes that aren't in sync with each other. Understood. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. Question from Amy in the box. Is a program required to do the evaluation if it received competitive funding for one grant period but then formula funding for the most recent grant period. Good question, Amy. Um, I'm gonna refer you to, uh, back to those evaluation FAQs. Again, those are linked from the evaluation plan templates. You can get there directly from the template. Specifically, the very last FAQ, FAQ 48, uh, asks about this exact thing. If you have a program that kind of moves back and forth between formula and competitive funding, 
um, then how should that work? So I'll, I'll read to you from that FAQ. If the grantee has received competitive funding in the past, so this means even if they don't have it currently, but if they've received, received competitive funding in the past, the requirements are determined as follows. If the grantee has received at least three years of competitive funding for the same project, I know I'm you know, beating a dead horse here, but that same project definition is really, really important. Uh, so if they've received at least three years of competitive funding for the same project, an evaluation plan is required. If they've received at least six years of competitive funding, then they would have a evaluation report required as well. So the key is not what the, what the grantee received most recently, it's the total accumulated years of competitive funding they've received for the same project. So I hope that helps. We are getting close to the end of our time together here. We've got about four more minutes. Uh, so, and I don't see any other questions either in the Q&A box, and I don't see any other hands raised. So let's give it that 30 more seconds, see if any other questions come through. Um, while folks are thinking about those final questions, I do wanna say uh, again that the FY 22, 2022 Notice of Funding Opportunity webpage is your source for all information related to the FY22 grant competition, including evaluation requirements, evaluation plan templates, um, and also other technical assistance opportunities. There are other sessions, other Q and A's, there are recorded webinars available to you in the technical assistance section of that webpage that can help you answer all sorts of questions about the uh, 2022 application requirements. Also, there's an email address, um, which I'm going to uh, type in the chat here in a moment. Um, so if you think of a question uh, that maybe you don't get a chance to ask, ask during this session, or you think of it after the session ends, um, you can always email grants at cns.gov. Uh, that is the all-purpose email address for any questions that are grant competition related, grants at cns.gov. So I will type that into the chat, give folks 30 more seconds, see if there's any last questions. All right, seeing no more questions and no more hands, wanna thank all of you for participating and for your interest. Wanna thank uh, Jada Asensio from the Office of Research and Evaluation um, and Carrie Markovitz uh, from NORC. Appreciate uh, your participation. And uh, remember that there's lots and lots of help available for you in the evaluation space. Please don't hesitate to reach out to Carrie and her team from NORC through the Evaluation TA portal. Um, we're, we're really help, happy to help support you um, as you look toward successful evaluations in your upcoming grant cycle. So appreciate you all. Have a great day um, and uh, good luck with all your evaluation efforts.